So capture cards are generally associated with game console streaming, but the truth is, is that they're really the backbone of a lot of event production setups. So we're gonna take a look at different use cases for capture cards and try and determine which is the best capture card for that particular use case. So just a quick disclaimer, none of the capture card manufacturers mentioned in this video knew about this video or worked in partnership with this video. It is true that XSplit has worked with some of these capture card manufacturers to improve their integration within XSplit Broadcaster. But having said that, this is really just my own personal experience and my own subjective opinion with capture cards. This is not like the definitive must listen to list. It's just what I've used and what I've experienced in my own personal use cases. So, you know, feel free to light me up in the comments, but anyway, let's get into it. So first let's get into one of the more niche use cases, which is 4K capture. Now I know 4K is slowly becoming part of the streaming mainstream with support in YouTube. But I think for a lot of people, what they're doing is 4K capture of their consoles or their PCs or high refresh rate capture or capture of their 4K cameras. And this is more for VOD content, like basically, you know, recording a YouTube video or something. And so in this case, I think based on just price and value, the best option, especially considering that most 4K capture is gonna be done through HDMI, is the Elgato 4K Capture Pro, the Mark II edition. It's at a really good price point, works really well. The software is really easy to set up. It supports HDR and it supports high refresh rate. So if you're doing like 1440p, 120 hertz, you can get that all going. It's pretty good for a dual stream setup. Now on the portable side, I like to stick with Magewell capture cards. It's the USB Capture Pro line, it's the metal ones. Now, unfortunately, these don't support 4K60, and this is mainly because of the limitations of USB 3.0 bandwidth, but I will say like these are handy in a lot of different situations. I kind of always throw one in my bag when I'm going out to an event because you never know when another capture card is going to go out or you need a replacement input. They support a variety of formats and inputs and uh, they're just really handy to have around. So recently Elgato announced the Camlink Pro. It's a PCIe capture card that gives you four full HD HDMI inputs. I think this is really handy if you want to capture like your console and a face cam. But the thing is, is a lot of times for multi input capture, this is going to be used for like event space PC. Like if you're going to do multi camera coverage, and if you need a lot of inputs, like it's pretty standard nowadays that instead of buying like a TriCaster or getting a huge Blackmagic ATEM switcher, you'll actually build a PC that can have multiple multi-capture capture cards. So you can have maybe three or four of these in there and then you have 12 to 16 inputs. And I think the capture cards that are still the best for these are the Magewell Pro Capture line because they offer an SDI quad capture card. So that means you get, you know, four SDI quad capture inputs. There's an HDMI version too. So you can mix and match those. So if you're gonna be doing like a lot of gaming capture, you can have maybe just one dual capture quad capture and then the other three are SDI that's taking in all your feeds that are having longer cable runs. These are really handy. You can put multiple in one PC. And if you're on a laptop, you can actually connect a PCIe enclosure that connects via like Thunderbolt 3 and you can put these capture cards in as well. So definitely the Major Pro Capture, if you're gonna be doing multi-capture or multi-camera events, it's really the best option. They're really pricey. That's really the attractive part about the Elgato. It's like a third of the price of the Major World cards, but these work well and they last forever. I've never really had one of these fail on me. So it's kind of funny that we live in a world where there's so many USB-C devices coming out. Like every day, it seems like a new device is USB-C only. But having said that, it's almost kind of funny that there really hasn't been any USB-C or Thunderbolt capture cards. Like the only one that I've seen has been the Avermedia Bolt capture card, and it's kind of like an expensive and niche device. So normally for like a portable capture card, I would probably pick the Magewell 4K that I mentioned earlier. But in this case, I'm actually going to pick a somewhat rare capture card. So this capture card is the X Capture One. It's made by this company called Mcomsoft in Japan. You can only import this device because technically it's only available in Japan. So it's quite pricey in that sense, like about $300. And you bring it in and then you actually got to go kind of dig around the site to find the drivers to install it. But I will say for a relatively small square shaped capture card, 
the great thing about this one is that it captures everything. So with a lot of capture cards, you only have like one input, like HDMI input. This pretty much has all the inputs. So it has S-Video, HDMI, it has VGA capture. And the cool thing about this is that basically this unit was designed to capture all kinds of, you know, SD sources. So a lot of times you get like Nintendo 64s or PlayStations and, you know, they're either composite or S-Video and they have really weird resolutions that they output that most capture cards can't capture. Like you have to put them in a scaler and then send it from the scaler into the capture card. This thing can really capture these directly. Like you can even use it to capture directly from some arcade machines. And in this case, like if you're not a retro gamer, just get whatever portable capture card you can find. But if you're going to be capturing old school consoles or just weird stuff and you want something that you can take with you and can handle everything, I think this MCOM Soft is really cool. Build quality is okay. I think the Mage is better because it's like in a metal housing. This one is in plastic basically, but the only drawback to the Mage Wells, especially like the really expensive high-end ones, is they have a fan for cooling, which actually makes a bit of noise. So like you don't want it near a microphone or anything. But yeah, the MCOM Soft is probably my favorite like portable capture card. Okay, so I'll admit most of the capture cards that I mentioned in this video are very niche capture cards or they, they're for a specific purpose. But I think if you're investing money into your streaming setup, it becomes less of like what can get the job done into what serves its purpose the best. But if you're just looking in like a budget capture card or a capture card that, you know, can last you for a while. So there's tons of capture cards that have tons of different things, but I think you want to maybe invest a bit of money in a capture card that's going to last a while and that's going to grow with your setup. So I think this really leaves two options, which is the Elgato 4K60 Pro Mark II and the Avermedia Live Gamer Duo. Now, if you're a game streamer, like if you're going to be streaming games and it's all about quality or, you know, you're making YouTube content as well, get the Elgato 4K. It's going to have the HDR. It's going to support high refresh rate. So, you know, you're not really limiting your setup when you're streaming. I think that's the best choice right there for that. Now, if you're going to be someone that's maybe doing like event broadcasting or you want like a really high end camera to put with your setup or you're going to be doing like a talk show or something, basically anything that's multicam, get the Avermedia Live Gamer Duo. It's going to have the two HDMI inputs that's going to last you for a while. Now, on the portable side of things, so I mean, there's so many capture cards that have flooded like the Amazon marketplace and they have prices all different ways. So there's not really a specific one that I can recommend because honestly, the, the kind of like uh, dirty little secret with a lot of these capture cards is they're basically all manufactured by the same group of companies. Like all the companies make the boards, the brands go and buy the boards and bring brand them into their marketing and packaging to make them more expensive. So a lot of these capture cards are actually made by the same people if you kind of dig around to buy it. And so pretty much like as long as it's, as it's a USB 3.0 capture card, it's probably going to be pretty decent. It's probably going to take HDMI, at least 1080 So I would say, you know, kind of shop around, try it out. If it seems too good to be true, like if the price is just way too low, it probably is. And you can probably find a review about it, like the $11 capture cards, but they only do 720p. So between 50 to about $120, you can find one of these kind of generic, like not name brand capture cards that are USB 3.0 and they'll probably work just fine for whatever use case you need. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for my capture card picks and my favorite capture card you know, products and brands. But I want to know from you, like, what is your favorite capture card? Like, is there a capture card that I missed that you think is really good? And what is your budget for like streaming equipment? And what's like the most expensive piece of streaming equipment have you bought? Like what's the most expensive piece of your setup that's just meant for streaming, like not just the PC? Let me know in the comments, give a like and share this video if it was helpful and be sure to subscribe to join us next time in the studio.